Well, I got a question too to follow about regulation. So we got uh, Big Boy Crypto, big YouTuber versus Sam Bankman Freed right now, FTX. I got to talk about this. What, what do you feel about his laws, uh, what they did in New York with the uh, bit licenses and basically coming after decentralized exchanges? I So I, I think that's wrong. I mean, decentralized is the future. I believe in, I mean, I centralized protocol. I mean, that's part of it. You need to protect the protocol, but you need decentralized everything. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way. It's like, if you want to take that non, take down Norway, our biggest weakness is we're not decentralized. For Russia to do that is like easy. Mm -hmm. Because we have so many weak points. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's a fair point. I do believe that decentralization is more resilient in, in the long run. I mean, uh, any central entity, I mean, you just have one point of attack. It's very, uh, if, if someone's willing enough, they, they, they'll they certainly attack it. And they will be because this is also geopolitical issues. Right. Yep. And that's why it's important. So this is weapon in, in the right hands. We need to understand that this is very powerful weapons if it's used wrong or right. That's why I believe in decentralization, because it's, it's going to be a more transparent world, it's a better world, and it's an important part. And that's why you can call it ESG. It is it's really uh, giving the world something better. And not everyone has the same interest, but it creates more transparency, and it's important, and we are empowering people, and we take away middlemen, which means that it's going to benefit you know, every single human being living on Earth. And we want to be there, help them. Yes. One, one question I have uh, just, you know, outside of uh, smart contracts, at least for the moment, is, is Bitcoin, right? What are your thoughts on Bitcoin uh, with, you know, what a lot of the mainstream is pushing with, you know, becoming digital gold and, and a world reserve asset? I don't know, believe like that. I, I don't believe in that for a second. <laughs> I'm not a bit. Oh yeah, put it this way. I'm not a BTC fan. Yeah. I don't even call it Bitcoin. What do you call it? Bitcoin? BTC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. BTC. Yeah. You know, this actually is a great segue into a question that I did have because you had mentioned on your Twitter not too long ago that you had uh, at least a little bit of an assumption on who Satoshi Nakamoto might be. Uh, any chance you'd like to illuminate our audience with that? Uh, no, I, I, put it this way, I have no doubt who Satoshi is. Oh, well, fill us in. Fill us in. <laughs> no, I believe that uh, Satoshi is Craig Wright. I'm 100% convinced. And who and just for our audience, who is Craig Wright? Because I I'm, I'm not familiar with him. Oh, you should so, be. He was in that no, doctor. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. So Dr. Craig Wright, he created the original Bitcoin protocol back in 2008, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And he's Satoshi. And in principle, everything happened from there. It was like a fork of what's called B2C today, or what people seen as Bitcoin. Is is actually a fork out of that original uh, white paper. And uh, out of there, you created Bitcoin Cash, and then there is something called BSV. Uh, and I think uh, that's actually, you know, when it comes to banking and, and transaction, is some of the things outside Algorand. And if I should have, uh, if, if I should have my favorite world, I would have a mix between Algorand and BSV, because technology-wise, BSV is really, really good. That's and there are some brilliant minds there. And I dived into it, and, and I, I love that part. Uh, I think there's been too much noise about Satoshi, and I don't really care about who Satoshi is. But if you ask me who I believe it is, I'm 100% sure it's Dr. Craig Wright. He has 20 master degree plus and a number of PhDs. He's one of the most brilliant minds I ever met. And only a person like that will be able to invent uh, what was the original white paper here. Yeah. And, yeah. and correct me, I mean, is Craig, Dr. Craig Wright, is he still alive? I, I mean, I'm, I know that yeah, there's been... He's, yeah, okay. he's, 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 he's alive. He, uh, I met him, uh, you know, maybe no four or five times. I spent uh, in, a couple of hours diving into his brain, which is an amazing journey uh, for yeah. everyone that gets an opportunity. And uh, I have to say that um, uh, when I when I, I I'm I like conspiracy theories, so I, I like <laughs> me too. And and I I I one of my favorite playwriters is uh, Henry Gibson, 
and the enemy okay. of the people. When people hate someone, there needs to be some something with them. And he's probably one of the most hated person on earth. And then I'm wondering why. Because that's the question you always ask yourself. Right. Not that all these compact majority is right in their thinking. You think, hmm, why do they hate him? And then you go and study that and you do your research and you do your homework and you, I concluded, he's Satoshi. And yeah. I started looking into the world of this and who's the power behind it. If you look at Silicon Valley, they all missed out of Web3. They all yeah. missed it out. And the only company, serious company in the US that actually are a player in this industry and can be, depending on how they do it. And they're a dinosaur. They used to be a dinosaur. I used to work for them, actually. Uh, and that's IBM. Yeah. Because they yep. are filing patents and they're doing a lot, several clock smart moves. And Alibaba is doing things and Tencent is doing things. But Silicon Valley, they totally missed this. Yeah. Can, can you speak on... Um... Uh, Silvio Macaulay and Algorand, because uh, like in the comments, someone said your first coin. It is like is 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 brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and I adore what uh, he created. Algorand is to my heart, uh, and uh, what I like is that you created a very stimulating environment where people are excited, and you see no use cases starting to bloom, and that's what you need. It doesn't matter if you have a platform. Because I look at this just like operating system back in the telecom industry. It's going to be consolidated. We are today with Android, iOS, and a couple of others. Yeah. But it's going to be consolidated. And I think that uh, what he created and Algorand, and they were early on, you know, the green, the proof of stake, yep. the whole principle of those things, which I love. Uh, I think it's a very, very brilliant model. And it's the model that fits me best. Mm hmm what just because we kind of talk about the you know algorand being the most i would say one of the most green blockchains uh with its lightweight uh, ability on consensus what are your thoughts around all the you know uh environmental scores and just the environmental talk when it when it comes to the likes of bitcoin who, which is still proof of work you have ethereum moving to proof of stake to be better and then you have algorand what's your thoughts on all that yeah that's a proof of work and and you know what you call btc uh, I mean, I don't believe in that at all. You see the merge that uh, Etrium did when it went from proof of work to proof of stake. Big step. Uh, maybe I haven't worked completely out, but I mean, I really hope that's working uh, well out. Uh, and um, uh, I see that, you know, I think the green part of this is so important. We need to be, you know, the planet is what we have. And right. we, we, we can't use that with computers or kill it by uh, over excessive use to do some bullshit mining or uh, BTC. Thanks. Right. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, while we're on the topic of uh, crypto and Algorand still, I'm curious to get uh, your opinion on, uh, you know, what does Algorand need to do in order to, you know, break into the mainstream? Like, how does it reach that mass adoption or really just crypto more broadly? Because, uh, you know, it's getting there, but we're, we're, we still haven't really breached that mainstream adoption yet. So what do you think needs to change in order for that to happen? You need to tap into the top 10,000 companies in the world and their deployment of it. And as soon as that started, which is now happening? I studied, um, uh, I looked at McKinsey, I looked at Bain, I looked at Boston Consulting Group. Just the last six months, there's so many people moving uh, into that sector within those consultancy companies. And that's going to change it all. It's not going to be changed by Algorand Foundation. They don't have the skill set to change this. It's yeah. going to be changed by the big consultancy firm. Uh, and that's just how it is. And they ask, the board asked the question, what do we do about Web3? The CEO is scared that he's missing out or something and end up doing it. Look at LVMH. They're going to follow their Hublot watches or they're going to follow Tiffany, the diamonds. Yep. They're going to use, use that type of technology. Then you have mass adoption. And it's naturally going to be part of everyone's life without being necessarily seeing it. So mass yeah. adoption will happen without even every individual seeing it or understand that there's something behind it. Because quite often, if I'm surfing the internet, so much is happening, but I can't see it. Right. Yeah. And people are tapping in to income stream, 
that I have no clue about. So, I, like, I like what you said, though, with the, the 10,000 companies. I haven't heard anyone speak on that. So I'll say, though, we're going to spread that out. No, um, and we should spread it out because that's where it starts. And that's why I'm so happy to see that all this. And at the same time, when you talk to Bain, you talk to McKinsey, and they talk, they tell me about meeting they have with the CEOs. And the CEO goes, um, uh, blockchain isn't that Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, they need education. Yeah, that's like, they, they have no clue. They yeah. have absolutely zero understanding. Well, I and do have a Another comment you talk about mass adoption. Who I see really making moves right now is Polygon, and they have something I think figured out with what you said. They're making moves and partnerships. You know any insights on what, why Polygon or what they're doing? 